hello YouTube. So I know this review is kinda late. I didn't really mean to make it this late. I did actually mean to make it to in the second to last month week of November. But uh, that didn't really happen. So I'm just going to so I'm just going to finish up this one and then I'll pretty much close it all out for all my November reviews. Um so I am sorry that, that happened. I really didn't mean for it. I actually did have one more review planned in November, but I can do that next year. Um, so this seems to be happening a lot. Um, there are, for some odd reason, people have been trying to make it a tradition to make stop motion movies for the holidays. Like, I don't know why this is. This is just something that sort of seems to be going on. Also, granted, some of you guys could view this one as just sort of a, just a movie, not really should be connected to any holiday. It does, however, surround itself with autumn. So it counts for this month, it still isn't technically winter yet, so it counts, I can still do it this month. Um, so, with that, let's go into the Fantastic Mr. Fox. the story is about a retired chicken farmer, so many there are, hmm, who made a promise to his wife 12 fox years ago, I guess it's like dog years, um, that he would stop stealing chickens and to go into a better life, to go into a more simpler life because they had a child on the way. Which was greatly ex which his wife told him with so much excitement by just saying, I'm pregnant. So much excitement there. Um, and then later on they have a son named Ash and they are now living inside of a hole and Mr. Fox is now working for the Gazette. And actually kind of a funny, pretty mediocre article. Um, yeah, when I actually did pause it and read it. I didn't read the second article page because I was too bored, I don't know. Um, and now, Mr. Fox is deciding, well, I kind of want to go back into thieving, but I want a really good place to do it in. So he just, so they go out and buy a tree. I guess that's like a mansion or something in this world. And, mm, that also seems to have a perfect view of Fogner, Spunks, and Beans. Three different farmers that well, pretty much Mr. Fox wants to wants to steal from for his last job. While stealing from them, he's accompanied by um, a possum named Kyle. So him and Kyle go out into the first two high schools just with both of them, and then on the third one they invite Chris Alverson who is Ash, who is the son of Mr. Fox, his cousin, who is apparently a natural at everything, which can sort of cause some butting heads between him and Ash. But eventually they do allow Chris Offerson on, and he actually does really come in handy, but not so much when they get home, because their wife has pretty much found out what they've been up to. I mean, they had no food in their pantry, and then all of a sudden, their pantry is all of a sudden full. Nothing suspicious there. And so she's pretty much found out what's been going on. And while she found this out, the three farmers have also found out where Mr. Fox lives. Somehow. Yeah, they just sort of stumble upon where he lives. I guess they trapped him or something? Even though they like waited till the till like an hour or so later when they found out that they were robbed. Really, how'd they find him? That that's not really explained, they just sort of find them. Um but now they're they've shot off Mr. Fox's tail 
and they also had to retreat underground because they were destroying his house. And for some reason, that causes all the other animals in the town to go underground too. I guess they were afraid they were going to be interrogated or something. The animals do talk in this world, so not just to themselves, they can also talk to other animals and humans, so I guess they could interrogate them, it sounds like something they could do. So they've all now had to retreat underground, and as you can tell, that doesn't fare that well with some of the people, especially the badger, played by Bill Murray, who is hilarious in this. Um, but now it's up to Mr. Fox and all the other animals to use their natural talents to try and out with the farmers, while also getting back pretty much all the stuff they lost and setting up a pretty good home for themselves. So, at first glance, this movie just looks like any other heist movie. I mean, we've all seen heist movies before. We know how they go. Someone's going to do a last job, so now they're going to need some help in doing it. But eventually they find that help, then realize that they're over their heads. But then they realize, oh, okay, never mind. This is a smart idea, I guess. So, yeah, we've all heard that before. But, it's how they execute it. The way they pretty much execute it is, these farmers want revenge for this. Why? I don't really know. I mean, they didn't really get that much stolen from them. It's just kind of one turkey from, from August. Bunt had like a whole pant, a whole pantry stolen from him. I guess that he would be the most obsessed one here, right? Nope, it's Bean, who only had like three balls of his cider stolen. He'd never get that back. And so, pretty much it's how far these guys go and to what extreme they've gone to to get revenge on Mr. Fox. That makes it so funny. But there is also the fact as to how these jokes are delivered. They can be delivered in kind of a dull way, but mainly the reaction that they get and the dull way that they've delivered it, that makes it really funny. Again, with how Mr. Fox learns about her, about his wife being pregnant, all she pretty much says is, I'm pregnant. And then his reaction is like this huge smile on his face. You know, the timing that they have here is what makes it really good. Wes Anderson, I haven't really, unfortunately, I haven't seen much of his work. Because mainly some of his work is like R-rated movies and I'm only 14. Granted, I've seen like 17 R-rated movies, but still. Um, I do, I can definitely tell that he does know what he's doing. And... What he has done with this story is really good. I love the way that he did this. That, and it does really feel like it's in the season of fall. They did sort of seem to make it look like that. It looks like fall. Everywhere throughout this film, it looks like fall. But I'll talk about that later in more detail in the animation area. But... And pretty much with this story, they've made it really funny, and they've actually done a really good spin on a pretty overdone heist story. I mean, we already know about the heist story, and in kind of a funny thing, they actually kind of poke fun at it at one scene. And so I really do like how they did that. They sort of made fun at how heist stories have been already done pretty much been done to death, but they also gave it an original way of doing it, and sort of continued out how things would normally go for it. So, for the story, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really do like what they've done with it, and all the humor in this movie seems to be right on point. So, with that, let's go on to the characters. 
So for the characters, um, the very first one that I'm going to start off with is Mr. Fox. Now, this character is a lot of fun, and by far my favorite in the movie. But he's very hard to describe. Yeah, I don't know why, but he is very hard for me to describe. I kept on thinking of different ways of doing it, but I can't really settle on a certain way. I'm just going to have to try and sum up the best I can, but he's more of something that you have to watch to actually, well, understand his character. And for the most part, he does seem to, well, have a lot of fun with his job, for one. We really always see him smiling while he's healing from things, so he does seem to be very, joy very joyful about his work. And he's also just a lot of fun. He's fun to watch. George Clooney does a great job at him, as him. Um, I really do like the way that um, he he was put into the role. And you know what? He does great as, as Mr. Fox. I don't even really know who else I would get to play him. He just does so great at it. And he does sort of bring this life to the character that I don't think any of the other actors could put in. So I'm very glad that he did. Um, and then we have his wife, Mrs. Fox. Now, she can sort of fall into the stereotype of she's the kind, supportive wife. And yeah, she is. But they do have some things that make her different. Like... There are some things that can push her a bit too far. Like, say, her husband her husband lying to her about this promise that they made a few years back. Him stealing from three farmers and causing her house to be destroyed. Um, also causing all her friends and also causing all her friends to be, to be forced underground. And losing every single possession that she ever owned inside that house. But, you know, I mean, those are just some of the few things that can push her. But, the, and you know what? The weird thing is, she's surprisingly calm about this. Yeah, she's pretty much calm about a lot of things. She's pregnant, and eh, she's calm about that. She's pregnant again, eh, doesn't matter. She's about, she's about ready to slap her husband. She's calm about that too. She even tells him first because he needed to know. Going to just find out after she slapped him, I don't know. Um, so, I really do like what they did with her, and they did make her kind of a different and unique character. And after her, then we have Foggus Bunsen Bean, the one fat, one short, and one lame. Now, for Foggus Bunsen Bean, there is not too much to say about them, because really, we don't really know that much about them. Okay, so, for the first two farmers, Bar Burger and Bunce, we, they're pretty much the same characters. Except their puppets are different. Like, in size or in, or in shape. That's pretty much their big difference there. And then, Bean is probably the one that stands out the most about them, but he's not really all that great a character. He's just sort of the smarter one out of the three. Good for him? Yeah, at least he does have more of a plan in mind as to what, to, as to what he's doing. But, still, he's going after a fox. It should require an elaborate scheme. Even though, granted, the animals in this world do seem to be treated just like humans, but it still doesn't really seem like he needs this big elaborate scheme. And also, am I the only one who finds, am I, still, am I the only one who finds it weird that Bean is the one who becomes the most obsessed with this when Bunce 
is the one who had the most stolen from. Sorry, their names are so similar. I always have to think back to that song to remember their names. And really, if you want to know the big defining qualities of their character, then just go listen to the song, Song Against Bunch and Bean, One Fat, One Short, One Lean. And it's actually a pretty good song, but it pretty much just tells you all you need to know about them. Which is not that much. They don't have that grand they don't have that great or wide variety of characters. And so after them we have Ash. Now Ooh, I'm probably going to be saying this a, a few times in this review, but really, this is, with these characters, you have to go and watch the movie. I mean, there are so many, these, these are really good characters, and I don't feel like I'm doing them any justice in this, because they are very well written. Wes Anderson does a great job writing them. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention about Mr. Fox, this, this just randomly popped into my head, um, because I said Wes Anderson. Mr. Fox is actually based off of Wes Anderson, even down to wearing the brown suit that Wes Anderson would wear a lot. So that's kind of an interesting little fact. Um, but back on the Ash, um, he is one of the characters that you had to see, really, you had to see the movie to sort of see the character and see how they're done, because they are done very well. It's just, I can't really describe them because I don't really know what to say. They're done very well, but I don't know how I'm supposed to describe them, because they're done so uniquely. And you know what? That's a very good thing. I shouldn't be able to describe the characters most of the time. I should be able to say they're so unique and so different that I that I just don't know how to describe them. And you know what? Ash is one of them. He's now pretty much down to the basic parts of his character. He is pretty grumpy and yeah, he gets annoyed about a lot of things, but you gotta keep this in mind. He's a teenager. He's going to get annoyed about things. He's going to be grumpy about a lot of things because that's just sort of what happens at that age. Just like hormones or something. Gravity Falls episode to clip here, I guess. The hormone thing that they brought up on the show once. Um, now, okay, so, okay, so he is pretty grumpy and everything, but what else is there? Well, they really do represent him as a, as a pretty normal teenager, aside from the fact that he's a fox. Like, pretty much... He cares a lot about his reputation at school and everything. Although he doesn't like getting in fights, and he does have a pretty big interest on this one thing. And I don't know if this is common for other people, but it is for me. Like, when I get into something, I go full into them. As you can tell with all this movie stuff, I'm really into movies. So, like, whenever I get into something, I get all the way into it. I just adore it, then. And that's sort of what Ash does here, too. Even down to wearing the costume of his favorite comic book character every day. And, yeah, I wear this vest every day, too. Um, so I can sort of see, so I can sort of relate to this character in a way. But I do really like how they represent him. And then we have Christopherson who is a direct opposite to Ash. Now, Ash isn't really good at sports or anything, maybe that's another thing that we have in common, and, but he really does try, he tries to be good at things. But, with Christopherson, he doesn't need to try, he's just a natural at everything. Everything he does, he's just good at it. And, that can, of course, cause some tension between him and Ash. And that's really where the good part of, it, of their characters come in. They are direct opposites, but that's what makes them fun. It makes it fun to see them work off each other. It makes them really enjoyable to watch. And you always feel like, okay, these are good characters. I want to see what they do. I want to see what happens with them. I really do enjoy the way these characters are made in this movie. 
and Christoph is a great part is a great part of this and I will talk about one thing about him in the animation part, but pretty much keep in mind that it is a pretty interesting thing. Um and then we have Kyle, the possum. Now Kyle on the off hand is pretty much just a guy that gets distracted a lot. But He's very enjoyable as well, for a few reasons, actually. One, just, just the way they made him. They wrote him to be so fun and have him be very happy about what he's doing. And just sort of be glad to be there. And then they also made him really funny. He delivers like half of the jokes I could not stop laughing at when I first heard when I first heard them. Like, okay, we're gonna give them blueberries. Well, why are we doing that? Because they like blueberries. Oh, okay. And then when they're just like, okay, so we're going to have to jump over. We're gonna have to jump over this fence. Then we're going to have to go around the back. Hey, why don't we just go over there? There's no traps or anything. Oh yeah. That's a good point, too. So he is really funny. Those were just, like, two of the jokes that I really thought were funny. Um, but he has so many more. Um, so I really do like the way they did him here. He is very well done. Then we have Agnes, who... Really, I don't think is that good a character. She's not in the movie that much, and she's just sort of there when she is. She's not really doing anything. She's just sort of there. Now, I, then, I, now when she is on screen, she does have some funny lines, like the word, like the "we're going steady" line. That one was really funny, and I do kind of like the way that she was done. But and her design is pretty cool. But there's not really much to her character. And now after her and the last character. This one is Badger. Now, why am I talking about this one? There are so many other animal characters to talk about. Well, his voice is pretty much the reason why I'm talking about him. Who is he voiced by, you might ask? Bill Murray. And I gotta say, he does a great job with what he's been given. He makes all these lines so funny. And they come across great. I really do love the way that Bill Murray portrays this character. Now, really, we don't know that much about the Badger, and he's just sort of a character. I mean, we don't really know anything about his personality or anything. But the way that his lines can be delivered by Bill Murray completely makes up for that. And you know what? I just love what they did with this guy. So... And for the characters, I'm going to give them a 9 out of 10 as well. I'm going to cut out um, giving it a full 10 because of August Bunch and Bean and their pretty invisible character, but you know what? The other characters are still very good and very solid. Now, I don't think I've described these characters well enough on this, because, I mean, there are so many more things I could there are so many more things about them that I wish I could describe. It's just sort of something that you have to see, though. So, go watch this, if not just, if just to understand these characters. Because they are so well done. And I really, really enjoy what they did with them. And so, yeah, 9 out of 10. Now, on to the animation. So, for the animation, I love it. Okay, um, this animation looks beautiful. It really does feel like it's taking place in autumn. And, you know what? Even Wes Anderson wanted that. So, do you want to know how he did this? Do you want to know how he actually made it look like autumn? Okay, so what he actually did was... He made sure that the that his main colors were autumn colors. 
And to do that, they completely cut out the color blue. There is no trace of the color blue except for in one character, Christopherson. And that's what I was going to talk about with him in the character part. Now, why doesn't he, now why does he have the color blue in his eyes and on his shirt? Well, apparently they did this to make him seem like more of an outsider. Sort of making him a little bit more different than everyone else in this town. And you know what? It works. I love those little subtle things that they can put in that you wouldn't notice on first glance, but when you know, but when you learn it, then you can't stop noticing it. I love things like that, and this movie is littered with it in its animation. It's so beautiful, it's so rich. I love how they did it. And another little interesting thing that they did with it is that on, on the characters and in the movements, they actually did it at, um, I think, I think it was like 15 frames per second instead of the usual 24. They only used 24 frames to shoot like an action scene. So that's really cool directing. I love how they can just think of putting that in. And I love how it works perfectly too. And you know what? This one did work great. I love how it, I love how they did it. It's just so great. I just love this animation. Um. It's so full of color and so full of atmosphere that, and these sets are beautiful. I just love what they did with it. So, if you haven't already guessed, the animation 10 out of 10. I love it. I love looking at it. If you're, if you're an animation fan, okay, I could actually watch this movie on mute and still feel satisfied just because I saw all this animation. Because it is so beautiful, I love the way they've done it, and it just looks great. So yeah, 10 out of 10. Um, so for the movie itself, well, I still, I really enjoy it. Now, I have met like a few of my friends who did say they don't like this movie. And yeah, I guess I can sort of see where they're coming from. It's definitely not for everyone with, well, I guess some people can just accept the flaws in it, like, the acting, they do try and make, like, some of the acting, they do try and make purposely wooden, like, the during the I'm pregnant line, that line was, that line was really funny, but, um, yeah, there it is, purposely wooden, and they do that for humor purposes, but I guess I can see how people could carry through with these kind of dry reactions throughout the whole film and just sort of be like, well, why are they treating this so calmly? This is something more big, so I want you to care more about this. And yeah, I could definitely see how people could feel about that. But personally, I really enjoy it. I love the characters and how they gave new personality and new life to them. And they actually did take some lines out of the book. That was cool. Um, there really just seemed to be this passion and love into, that they put into the movie. And um, this was actually something that Wes Anderson really wanted to do. So it is really cool that he finally got to do it. Um, and this definitely shows that Wes Anderson knows how to do animation. He knows what he's doing. And you know what? Everyone in this everyone in this crew did great with the animation, the story, the characters. It's all great. Even their music choices are pretty funny. And yeah, I know I didn't put in a song part in this, but really there are only like two songs. The Davy Crockett intro and the song that they made for this movie. So yeah, I wouldn't really feel like I'd be talking about that many songs. Um, so I really enjoy it, but I'm going to have to give it a 9 out of 10 instead of a full 10 out of 10. Because... Well, again, some of these characters are not really gone anywhere. Like, Bogus Bunts and Bean, they're still kind of just, we don't know anything about their character. They're funny, and I do like it, and I do enjoy seeing them. It's just, we don't really know that much about them. Same can be said for Owen Wilson's character, who had a whole scene. 
really used to his full potential there. Yeah, even when they're bringing back some of the animal characters, they don't even bring back the gym coach, played by Owen Wilson. I just... Why? I don't know, but I still really enjoy it. So yeah, 9 out of 10, I absolutely love it. Um, and for my next review, I'm going to be doing the Santa Claus. So yeah, bye.